It's been two years since the head of RTD suggested that the A-Line train wasn't troubled. It's just that us common folk don't understand how trains work. Now, federal railroad regulators, the people who totally understand how trains work, say that the A-Line still isn't working, and they're threatening to shut it down. We find ourselves back where we started on next. So I will ask you, is the A-Line working at all? And the answer, according to federal regulators, is no. The issue continues to be the crossing gate timing for the train to the plane. And you know this also affects the still unopened train to the grain, the G-Line to Wheat Ridge in Arvada. Here's our Marshall Zellinger. With Quiet Zones just got a kick in the ear. The Federal Railroad Administration told RTD in the city of Denver that a Quiet Zone waiver won't be granted until crossing gates stay down within the time required. Each crossing gate has a specific time the gates are supposed to be down. For example, at Monaco, the gates are supposed to stay down 30 to 50 seconds. At Holly, 29 to 49 seconds. But recent testing by federal inspectors found they stayed down outside that range 20 to 30 percent of the time. The reality of it is the gates are coming down a little too long. It's not like the gates aren't coming down and trains are coming through. It's the opposite. Arvada Mayor Mark Williams is also impacted by this decision by the feds because the FRA says G-line gates stay down longer 18% of the time. Denver Transit Partners, which runs the trains for RTD, told me the system cannot guarantee precise warning times because train speed is controlled by the human operator and is subject to conditions occurring between the time signals are activated and trains arrive at crossings. They say that there's some cosmetic things we can do to fine tune, but that we're not going to see dramatic changes in terms of the gate times. The technology on these rail lines is the first ever to be built from the ground up. So we're either going to get approval one day and feel like we're the first to walk on the moon, or federal regulators will hold us to what appear to be impossible standards and will be remembered like New Coke, Crystal Pepsi, Betamax, the Ford Etzel, or the DIA automated baggage system. A billion dollars has been spent on this. I would hate to see these rails all pulled up and put into the junk heap. Okay, that's not going to happen. RTD has two weeks to tell the feds how they're going to fix the problem. Denver Transit Partners pretty much says this is as good as it's going to get and it's safe. And essentially, if the feds stand firm, Kyle, it's going to cost too much to work around. I kind of feel like this is the relationship advice that all of us have given a buddy where it's like, dude, it's not working. Maybe you just lower your standards a bit. <laughs> I don't know. All right. Marshall, thank you. This latest slap down of RTD by federal regulators is going to push back our planned party. You know, the one that we promised to hold on board the A-line when it finally got the all clear, complete with a party hat and an I love the A-line t-shirt. I worry that people thought we were kidding. I promise you that we were not. We've had this t-shirt for six months now. Our awesome intern Lena made it with puffy paint and it's just been collecting dust. Like we've said, there ain't no party like an A-line party because an A-line party might not happen. The Denver School Board's national search for a new superintendent has ended with only one finalist and it is the internal candidate long thought to be handpicked for that job. Deputy Superintendent Susanna Cordova is the choice. So now begins a 14-day public comment period, though it's tough to imagine any comments from the public are likely to derail this entirely expected outcome. If Denver opens America's first supervised drug injection site, it will offer drug testing. Not testing the people. I mean, they're there to use illegal drugs. The site's workers would test the drugs to see if, if, say, like the heroin has been cut with fentanyl, which is a dangerous synthetic opioid that's been killing users across the country. And if somebody at Denver's supervised injection site brings in fentanyl-tainted heroin and still wants to shoot up with it, that would be allowed. Thinking being, they're just going to use it on the streets otherwise. Our new Roy looks at fentanyl's dangerous rise. It's gotten to the point Mutiny Cafe had to change the locks for their restroom. Some people will just walk in and make a beeline for the bathroom. They aren't the only Broadway business watching the drug problem unfold in front of them. We've had to have ambulances come and pull people out of the bathroom. 
While the state still has to give the okay, the Denver City Council said they want to open a safe injection site where people can use with someone nearby to help if they overdose and test drugs for fentanyl before they're used. Fentanyl is 50 to 100 times more powerful than morphine. People need to understand that it is here and it's in the streets and it's in the pills. Fentanyl can legally be used to help with pain, like for cancer patients. But the DEA says it's also illegally manufactured and then mixed in with other drugs like heroin. It's, it's one word, it's China. China is the, the producer of fentanyl. Some can be produced in Mexico. Drug dealers, even users, are buying it on the dark web anonymously. Just coming right through our ports, right through our airports and planes and right into our country. It's killing more people because it is so powerful and very small amounts can lead to fatal overdose. Last year, fentanyl killed 81 people in Colorado, double from 2015, according to the State Department of Health. But we aren't seeing the same ravaging effects like other parts of the country, partly because each region has its drug of choice. Ask local law enforcement or at a national level, and the choice in Colorado seems to be meth. But that doesn't mean it's not coming and it's not getting worse. So there's a couple of things going on, right? That not all coroners may be testing for fentanyl. Same goes for drug seizures. And here's the thing is that even people using the drugs may not even know there's fentanyl laced into it. And drug experts are saying that that is basically like playing Russian roulette because yeah. you do not know what you are putting in your body. Yeah, but yeah, they will allow people to make that choice there if they want to. Mm -hmm. So suppose a fentanyl user comes mm -hmm. into Denver's supervised site and they want to shoot up with fentanyl. Would they, that be allowed? They will be allowed in. Mm -hmm. And it's not just heroin. We're talking meth, cocaine, mm -hmm. any kind of drug. The idea is that they would be by someone who could help them if they overdosed. Yeah, and like you said, meth on the rise here. So if these become yeah. meth injection sites, so be it, they say. They will also be able to go right. there as well. All right, Anusha, thank you very much. Denver police did not want you to see the video that we are about to show you, so we obtained it elsewhere. It's a video of police searching for a shooting suspect inside a charter school in April. The principal wanted to call Denver Public School security first. DPD officers did not like that. Do you have kids? Yeah, so I'm not going to talk about my kids. I'm not okay. talk about, uh, I'm so if you shot speak. at your kids, though, you, I'm, I'm do you have I'm, the same policy? So I'm just, I'm just going to say gives you a taste of what Principal Lucas Ketzer was facing when the officers uh, came into yeah, a school. So he says they assumed that the staff was trying to hide uh, this suspect. Ketzer says he followed school uh, policy and eventually let the officers search the school. The video shows the officers saying that he's uncooperative. They accuse him of lying. Ketzer says the search by police traumatized here, students here, 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 here. and staff. There you see an officer Not pulling a gun on a teacher. Denver police would only say that internal affairs cleared all of these officers of doing anything wrong except for the comment that you were about to hear. I assume you're a teacher? So then they called the principal and that's when that... Oh, I see. The lip tart came downstairs that now said, no, well, we can't oh. confirm her or deny. So they're hiding. There you go, DPD officer using a slur that I won't repeat here in reference to a school administrator. The student they were looking for that day was not on the premises. He was later arrested, charged with attempted murder for a shooting in Lakewood. Now, warnings can be startling when they just come at you out of nowhere. You may see warnings outside theaters before the next performance you visit. Warnings about smoke or strobe lights, loud booms, even adult content. The New York Times recently noted that these advisories are a growing trend at theaters in the U.S. But the Denver Center Theater Company says the warnings are nothing new to them. They've been posting advisories for several years, only now... They're a bit more specific. Some people might say, well, that's a spoiler. The theater company doesn't see it that way. They acquaint them to the warnings that you might get before a movie or a TV show, you know, like those TV 14, or PG 13, or R ratings. In general, I think most of our content advisories do not reach into that territory. Um, just like when you turn on your TV and you see a language, violence, um, you know, sexual situations, we're kind of staying in that level, that high level advisory that we don't consider to be spoilery. Team says those very specific warnings like a, a gunshot and act two, for example, they take some extra steps to avoid those being spoilers. You can only get those very detailed warnings online. So you have to click through opt in to see them. All right, so you and me, we're history nerds, and as it turns out, so is a county clerk who's finishing up his term, which leaves a bit of unfinished business in the History Preservation Department. Arapahoe County Clerk and Recorder Matt Crane, who just lost his bid for re-election, has been leading an effort to preserve pieces of Colorado history, more than 2,000 record books that date back to the formation of Arapahoe County as Colorado's original county. 
They're 150 years old and they're in bad shape. His office has had each page cleaned and humidified, deacidified and encapsulated. Also, those records can go into the county's digital collection of public documents, which can be searched and viewed online. Crane is overseeing the preservation of the 73 oldest volumes, but it'll be up to his successor and county commissioners to finish that work. Denver's newest landmark is special for who built it. It probably meant a lot to him. It's just unfortunate that he didn't live long enough to see this process through. Some fans of the Rolling Stones have t-shirts. Others go bigger. If there's one thing they know me for, it's probably the bus. And chop chop, that wood pile won't be open forever. That's next. is everything. I know. My biceps. To Angela Marquez. She squeezes in a workout every day and always makes time for a gym pick. Post at PR Fitness Studio. Which is posted to Instagram in no time. You'll see a lot of workout pictures here. She isn't showing off. This was also my cancer anniversary. She's sharing survival. I also look at it as I'm alive because that was 11 years ago that day. The day Angela learned she had cervical cancer. Doctors removed lymph nodes in her yeah. pelvis to I, save her life. I survived cancer, I beat cancer, and now I have this. This is her new battle. Yes, it is in my left leg. The left leg is much bigger than the right. One Olga Belskaya fights too. It's an ongoing battle. They both suffer from lymphedema. It feels heavy. A debilitating condition. Oh my goodness. That lasts a lifetime. Lymphedema is the abnormal accumulation of protein in the tissues, so the area underneath the skin and above our muscles. Angela and Olga are treated by Vicki Ralph, a woman who is dedicated to treatment and awareness. I do about 45 minutes of stretching of the skin an occupational therapist at UC Health. This is short stretch compression bandaging. Some people are born with lymphedema, but for many, like Olga, the condition is triggered after lymph nodes are surgically removed to treat cancer. You have kind of, if you will, a mechanical failure of that section of the body. This chronic condition chips away at her sense of normalcy. It's full of liquid and your shoes doesn't fit, your clothes doesn't fit, and you just don't want to deal with it anymore. That's why Angela's Instagram feed, the Instagram page is funky lymphedema, has a deeper purpose. That's my leg. <laughs> it informs, it inspires. The, we call it the mini incline. Those who search for answers. I want to change the image of the pictures maybe that they see when they do Google lymphedema and feel that it's gloom and doom and negative. The idea that you're somehow harmed by hearing somebody's take on a subject, what's that about? You've got your ideas, you want to share them, other people have their perspectives. Let's bring it all together and listen to each other. It's a sign, and the sign clearly states that the woodpile is closed. I don't know what that means. Does that mean you can't drop off any more brush? Does that mean that if for some reason you want it, you can't take it? I don't know. Listen, the woodpile is closed, folks. Just steer clear of the spot found by Matt and Leslie Krupa over the weekend in Redstone and send us the signs that make you do a double take. Email next at 90news.com or get our attention with the hashtag HeyNext. Signs tonight from Mother Nature that the weather is indeed changing. We have high pressure that has been the dominant feature all week and now a lot of moisture coming our way from the Pacific. Winter weather and travel advisories have gone out for the high country where it's already snowing. The snow will pick up in coverage and intensity tomorrow and then the cold air will follow. We were 10 degrees cooler today, bringing us down to the average and tomorrow will be even colder. We're 37 outside right now. The winds are light and it's calm and quiet for eastern Colorado. Completely different weather story west of the Continental Divide and that will be the theme as low pressure digs into Southern California and then ejects northeast. Little waves coming into the state will mean periods of snow for the high country off and on between now and Tuesday of next week. Tomorrow night about this time, a little wave will bring a few flurries to Denver. Not expecting accumulation here, but it certainly will be colder and it will feel like the season for the parade of lights in downtown Denver. Prepare for winter driving conditions on I-70 and there's a second system that may bring a little light accumulation to Denver on Sunday. Tonight, 
calm and dry, chilly, low 28. Tomorrow we have a mostly cloudy and colder day with a chance of a few flurries, and uh, that'll linger into the early evening time period. We have a break on Saturday. It's uh, chilly but dry, and then light snow Sunday, Monday, one to two inches of snow. A uh, little bit of a warming trend. Take a few days for that, and not terribly warm for the parade of lights. Just dress up and bundle yourself up and get dressed. It's going to be a great night to be outdoors, even with a few snowflakes around. Hey, it's my boy, Major Waddles. All right, thank you, Kathy. He helped design the Denver Federal Building and Courthouse and the Colorado School of Mines. Yet John Henderson's favorite project was his own home. This week, that house, by Colorado's first licensed African-American architect, became a historic landmark. John Henderson, he is, he is actually the first licensed African-American architect in the state of Colorado. He definitely did work on a few very prominent buildings, um, but then a lot of uh, institutional buildings around the city. But definitely this was the house that he was most proud of. My name is Shannon Stage. I'm the preservation coordinator with Historic Denver. It was historically known that kind of north of City Park um, on this east side of Denver was where African-American families could um, live. It was harder to find houses uh, south of here, uh, they actually were having a hard time finding a house. So they found this empty plot of land and he decided, I'm going to build and design our own home. He wished before he closed his eyes for the last time to know that his home was a Denver landmark, that it could not be demolished and slot homes wouldn't go in in place of his home and his legacy. Unfortunately, my dad passed June 29th of this past summer. One of dad's sayings was, it's better to do something than not to do anything at all. You get up off your butt and do something. My favorite part of the house is the living room because you can sit any place in the living room and see the, the sunrises and the sunsets. It's in the shape of an H for Henderson. My dad left the most innovative structure in the United States of America at 26 in Milwaukee. See you later. We're good. Rolling Stones have tribute bands and a tribute bus. I brought all these paint jars out and the guy says, uh, what color are you gonna paint it? And I said, all of them. I think this counts as a luxury crossover, right? And you don't need wheels to cross a line. Old school next fans know this is the revenge of the Target Rock. From Maine to Maui, thousands of high school students across the country are getting in on the action by volunteering in their communities. It's great helping others, and it feels good too. Are you in? Whoa! Anyone can do it. All it takes is a little time. Are you in? Action teams of high school students are joining Volunteers of America and Major League Baseball players to help train and inspire the next generation of volunteers. It's easy to start an action team at your school, so you too can get in on the action. Are you in? Get in on the action at actionteam.org. How you doing, sweetheart? If anyone knows... There she goes. ...the difference between work and duty... Oh, I know you ask it for. <laughs> Gene Jiggets has known ever since he met his wife, Mary. Mary is a keeper. He kept her through a life of secrets. In 1951, Jiggets was assigned to an elite group of 28 men working on something they called the hydrogen bomb. And now that his work is done... It is time for his duty, assisting his 93-year-old wife. In entering in, into dementia. Fighting a disease that's taking her mind. I said one thing, one thing one that I will thing, pledge thing, that I will never do mm -hmm. as long as I'm able mm -hmm. to assist. Mm -hmm. I will never put you in a home. Because she is home. <laughs> We are Broncos.
I'm a Broncos fan because we got the best team in the NFL. My whole life I've been a Broncos fan. Denver till we die. We bring the thunder. Broncos fans are the best. It's probably the most exciting thing that you could ever feel. They're the best team in the league, obviously. We got the best fans. The whole stadium shakes and everybody's jumping around and rooting and hollering. There's nothing like this crowd. Broncos fans will always stay loyal. We're looking forward to another Super Bowl win. This is Bronco country. We bleed orange and blue. Colorado, we did it again. Colorado, you donated over 250,000 pounds of food and over $59,000. Thank you. This is a place where everyone takes care of each other. The most Colorado thing we saw today is a Porsche owner with another passion, skiing. Karen Sievertson took this photo of a sports car with a secondary sports rack on top, headed for Breckenridge. Good luck getting that thing up there on a powder day. That's an early or a late season driver, I suppose. Send your most Colorado photos to next at 9news.com. Rolling Stones play Mile High on May 26. Stones had a smaller fan base on this day in 1965 when they were in town playing the Denver Coliseum. Then Governor John Love declared it Rolling Stones Day in Colorado. An artist by the name of Norm Tulk is a fan as well. He invited our Corky Shoal to bring his camera to see his rolling tribute to the band. If you thought you were going to roll up here and I had a Rolling Stone cap and a t-shirt, it'd be kind of hokey. Yeah, I don't do that. I just sketched these out and inked them one night, just messing around. Keith Richards. I'm a Rolling Stone fan. I just don't I Mick Jagger. I don't need to put on Rolling Stone stuff and wear it around all the time. <laughs> if you're going to call me a Rolling Stone fan, it's because of the bus. This is how I roll, like a Rolling Stone, okay? This is Rodney Woods, Charlie Watts, Mick Jagger, Keith Richards, the Rolling Stones. Those are die-hard Rolling Stone fans. <laughs> well, I've had my bus 35 years. It's a 72, and it's a VW Westfall camper bus. I painted it this way probably in 2012. You know, after I painted this, there's so many people who say, oh, I used to have a bus like that. And I'm thinking, really? How many of these guys had buses like this? Really? There, there, there's always something you could add to it. It was meant to go on the front of the bus, but it got too big and it wouldn't fit. <laughs> It started off as a joke because somebody told me my bus was an eyesore. It was actually the spur of the moment thing, you know? I mean, like, I knew what I wanted to do and I just went with it and I took all that paint and I made it and I knew what I wanted to do and it was just uh, one of those things that just happened, you know? Die hard Rolling Stone fans. <laughs> Uh, that dude's a character. Norm says he doesn't plan to buy tickets to see the Stones at Mile High on May 26th. Now they didn't want to go. He's just like, yeah, I don't want to spend that kind of money. Before you beautiful people got obsessed with cars crossing the line at parking lots, you couldn't get enough of rocks assassinating the undercarriages of cars in those lots. Your two loves combined, next. idea of next is that we want you to hear things and say right on that's what I'm thinking and we also want you to hear things that make you squirm a little bit make you uncomfortable perspectives that you might not have considered but are still thoughtful and it's okay if you hear things that you don't like because you're smart enough to decide whether or not you agree with it let's consider different perspectives let's give you good information so that you can make smart choices you should expect to see and hear things that you have not seen and heard anywhere else Sideline Stories with Jim Sakamano, Saturday nights at 9.30 on Channel 20. It's the most wonderful time of year, the Nine News Parade of Life. Join us downtown for this holiday tradition, November 30th and December 1st. Or you can watch from home Friday, November 30th on Nine News. Presented by American Furniture Warehouse and produced by the Downtown Denver Partnership.
Special thanks to American Furniture Warehouse for protecting and preserving this holiday tradition. AFW is your gift-giving headquarters for the last 40 years with the best prices for furniture and accessories in Colorado. Come see how American makes beautiful homes happen for less. There have been frightening things in the news lately, familiar things for many Coloradans. Check in with your family and friends. If you or someone you know needs mental health support or emotional help, it's available right this second. A real person ready to provide real problem solving. Call or text Colorado Crisis Services. Let's take care of ourselves and each other. Hey, Denver, what happens when the most daring team in daytime takes on trending stories live? Anything and everything. I am pro sex workers. <laughs> You're crazy. Oh, I said it. You are totally off base here. I can't believe I'm saying this. I do agree with you. Denver, join the live conversation with the DBL Nation. Daily Blast Live, the talk of what's trending. Weekdays at 1 on 9 News. I aspire to be a writer. Uh, New York Times bestseller is the dream. My dream is to become a marine biologist and to work hands-on with animals. I dream to travel around the world and be an influential speaker. I want to be a businesswoman or a doctor. My goals and aspirations are to make a difference. My dream is to be an Air Force pilot. I want to go to med school and I want to be a trauma surgeon. I always ask my family for world peace for Christmas. <laughs> There is no reasoning with the culprit on today's You've Crossed a Line because we're talking total rocks for brains and rock for everything else really because it is a rock. It's a rock double parked in Parker. Wes Cornwell saw this at the King Supers. No idea how this happened. I like to imagine that it was a target rock that clipped a bunch of cars and then some ticked off driver picked it up and put it there as punishment. I have absolutely no idea if this piece of feedback is correct, but it's the most plausible explanation I could imagine for our sign tonight, the wood pile that said closed on it. John Irwin writes in to say the piles get too big to be burned legally with the permit. He says that one's already getting close to the limit for Grand County. So somebody put up the sign saying it's closed to new additions so that it's still permit safe. That sounds perfectly reasonable. Todd Vernon says it's crazy the A-Line can't fix their deal. There's trains everywhere. It's the new positive train control. It's the safety system that's long been the foul up. We'll see you next time. Subscribe to the next YouTube channel for the best of next and some other stuff.